Hello everyone, and welcome to today's devotional. Our thought today is going to actually build off of yesterday's discussion. We talked about Jesus saying that my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. The fact that Jesus says that that which sustains him, that which sustains his soul, was obeying the Father. And he goes on to say in verse 35, Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another wheat reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors." Jesus discusses the concept of harvesting and reaping, planting and, and doing labor and so forth. He uses this analogy to describe the teaching of the gospel and certainly the gleaning of souls for harvest in, in the, the aspect of teaching people the gospel, helping people come to the knowledge of the truth, those people then obeying the gospel is kind of the the whole point that Jesus is describing. But he says in verse 37, one sows and another reaps. In fact, Paul's going to bring this up about Apollos and how that uh, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. And that that also is in the context of teaching the gospel. But this is, this is all about having individuals being taught and being received by the Father due to their obedience. And you can see that based on the fact that as verse 34 then leads into verse 35 on through the next couple of verses. When he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work, based on what the disciples said, not quite understanding the, the spiritual application that Jesus was making. Then Jesus uses another physical situation to make a spiritual point talking about harvest, physical fields, physical harvest, physical reaping, but to make a spiritual point. He who reaps receives wages, gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. There's one who teaches the gospel, there's another who may water or who may harvest, who may, the, the, the culmination of the teaching of the gospel, that that seed that was planted in somebody's heart by one person may come to fruition with someone else teaching and so forth. And so it's interesting that Jesus says this on the on the all within this context of verse 34. My food is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Now, Jesus wasn't here to harvest. And certainly there are references in the New Testament about the harvest at at the judgment day and, and those who have been faithful kind of representing that good and, and good fruit to be to be taken up and harvested but Jesus is describing the concept of how obedience to God includes teaching others now Jesus says this on the heels of having taught the Samaritan woman which I think is very telling because earlier in the context, we know that he's speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well. And then here in verse 39, many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. And when the Samaritans come to him, they urged to stay with him. So he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his own word. And so it's interesting that I don't know if Jesus is trying to make the point to his disciples that the Samaritans and, and everyone they come into contact with is need to be taught, or if he's simply using this opportunity to make that point, or if there's something about the disciples urging him, Rabbi, eat, and there's something about that their intent in asking him to do that or urging him to do that as if you know you don't need to spend time messing with these samaritans i i don't know and i don't want to attribute any particular motive but it is notable that this is what spawns this this while this woman goes off into the city to tell the people of the city what happened this is what's happening and so as the in the meantime the disciples urge rabbi eat 
whether they were saying that in an effort to distract him, hey, you don't need to be spending time with these Samaritans, or hey, you need to, to relax and take a load off or whatever. Jesus says, look, this is my job. This is, this is what I'm here to do. I have food to eat of that which you do not know. My food is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Part of that is to teach the Samaritans, which goes to show that one application of this is to not discriminate or not uh, make a difference in who it is we teach the gospel to. And in verse 38, when he says, I sent you, into, sent you to reap for that which you have not labored, others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Uh, Jesus surely talking about maybe the prophets, talking about John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, who was sent to prepare the way for the Lord, prepare the people to hear the gospel, prepare their minds for the kingdom of God. And certainly maybe there were other disciples as well. Uh, certainly one of the other examples in Luke chapter 10 is about the 70 that Jesus sent. And in that context, he talks about laborers and harvests and so forth. And so certainly the ones that, that Jesus is speaking to here aren't the only disciples who are, are being told to teach and preach the gospel. And as we said, Paul makes it very clear that it doesn't matter who plants or who waters, but that God gives the increase. So then in Luke chapter 10 and in verse 2, uh, starting in verse 1, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Luke says these 70 others also, because back in chapter 9, he sent the 12 out to teach and preach. Then in verse 2, he says to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. And then the rest of this, he's going to inform them about specifics that are, are meant for them specifically and things that they're supposed to say when they enter into somebody's house and things like that. But what we see in verses 2 and 3 is, again, that, that spiritual application from a physical analogy about how the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Which is to say there are many, many people out there who are prepared and are ready to hear the gospel, who are prepared to obey the words of the Lord, but there needs to be more people willing to go out and reap, Men, more who are willing to go out and teach those individuals whose hearts are ready to do, not only to hear God's word, but to do it. But then in verse 3, he warns them, Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. So now he flips analogies. He goes and describes the fact that I'm sending you out and you're going to face pushback. You're going to face danger in, your, in this commission that he was giving them to teach the gospel, to go and, and reap the harvest and so forth. He says, go your way. I send you out as lambs among wolves. I'm sending you out knowing full well that you're in danger. But Jesus is clear to make that danger known to them. That's so that they can mentally, emotionally, spiritually prepare themselves. So that they know that what they're doing could very well bring about, not only is the potential there for great danger, but could very well bring about physical persecution. And certainly there's going to be um, emotional persecution, mental persecution, anguish because of people who are going to get upset, get angry, yell at them, and so forth. But especially in that time, there was going to be physical persecution as well. And then the last passage I want to consider is Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, we have another situation here uh, in verse 35. It says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So Jesus, when this in this situation, he's seeing the multitudes. It says he was moved with compassion for them. Of course, Jesus is already 
working and preaching, he's teaching, he's healing sickness and disease, and he keeps seeing all of these people, and he considers them as sheep having no shepherd. But then he tells the disciples, as he's looking on the multitudes, what he sees there is what he's relating here in verse 37 and 38. The harvest truly is plentiful. These are people looking for a shepherd. They are looking for salvation. They're waiting for the Messiah. They want to hear about the kingdom. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so we look at these passages to remind ourselves that just as it was then, so it is today. That ultimately, comparatively, rel relatively speaking, the laborers are still few. And we have to make sure that not only are we aware that the harvest still is plentiful. Uh, sometimes that's, that's easy to forget. That sometimes we look around in our society and in our world and we think nobody's interested anymore. Nobody wants to hear the gospel anymore. Nobody wants to, to do what's right anymore. And it may feel that way, but you have to remember that that's not true. There are always going to be people who are prepared and willing to do what's right. Now, we may have a hard time finding them in the sea of evil influence around us, but we have to be looking. We have to be ready. Sometimes you have gardens that are overgrown with weeds, but even within those weedy gardens, there are still plants prepared and ready to be harvested. And that's part of, part of our ability to properly discern, be on the lookout, be, make every opportunity count to talk about God's word. And that leads us to this other aspect that to remember that we are those laborers, or at least we are to be those laborers. We're to be the ones who are those who are being sent out into his harvest, being sent out like sheep among the wolves for, to try to help other potential sheep come to the one shepherd. And that's what Jesus is describing here. And so for us, let's remember not to be discouraged, not to be to be convinced that there just aren't any more people out there who want to do what's right. That's not true. It may be hard to find them. It may be hard to see them sometimes. And sometimes we may have to kind of rummage through the garden, through all the weeds, to find those plants, those fruit that are prepared for harvest. But they're there. And we just have to be ready. We have to be prepared to share the gospel with those around us. All right, that's the devotional for you today. Lord willing, our next devotional will be on Thursday. I hope to see you all then. Thank you, everybody.